Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So we've been getting a lot of questions asking whether or not CPU X or CPU Y will be able to handle a GTX 1080 or GTX 1070. There's a lot of people in the comments saying, oh yeah, any CPU under the sun will work or, you know, any new, you know, Core i5 or better. And the answer to that question is far more complicated than yes or a no. Um, we, we did put up the video whether or not your system could handle one of those cards. And with that video, it really stirred up a lot of people, and there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. So I decided, why can't I find a simple way for people to test themselves at home themselves and not relying on any other outside source to see if they can actually benefit from these new graphics cards? Now, I'm going to preface this video by saying if you're running a 60 hertz monitor, don't worry about it. As long as you do have any Core i5, you know, modern Core i5 or better, you'll be just fine. This video is not for people running 60 hertz. This video is for people running 120 or higher. With up to 200 hertz monitors coming out here shortly, 60 hertz is no longer really considered the benchmark. So we're going to be focusing on trying to see if what it will take to hit a solid 144 at minimum. But how viable is that? How feasible is that? And what does it really take to, to get to that point? Well, there's an easy way to start testing this yourself. If you're running a GTX 970 or GTX uh, 980 currently, you can see how this would scale up. What do I mean by that? Take your 1080p game that you're running right now and change it to 720p. So for example, I have a GTX 970. By taking the GTX 970 from 1080p and taking it down to 720p, that is a 56% lower pixel count. Okay, so the GPU will have 56% less pixels that it needs to worry about rendering. Now, what's really ironic is the GTX 1070 is roughly 57% faster than the GTX 970. So this is a pretty much a one-to-one -one scale. Now, obviously, due to game coding and other things that get in the way, this doesn't mash up 100%. So it's not like the exact performance you get at 720p is what you should expect from a 1070. That depends on drivers and many other factors. However, it will get you a rough idea and be within the ballpark of what performance you should be expecting. Now, taking your games down to 720p, you're going to notice some serious differences. And honestly, I came across some things that I did not realize. So by taking games and lowering them, you would expect to essentially double your frame rate, correct? Unless you're hitting a CPU barrier. But I noticed my CPU was not hitting 100% utilization at 720p on The Witcher 3 nor Doom 2016. So I had to think about it there for a second. I'm like, okay, so CPU is not the bottleneck. GPU is not the bottleneck. What is? And then I decided to take my DDR3 2400 and lower it to 1600. DDR3 1600. And that's where we see a major drop in performance. Believe it or not, when using a GPU as powerful as the GTX 1070 or 1080, your memory clock speeds become a huge factor. It is a much bigger difference than I originally anticipated. Look at these numbers. I'm going to throw up some charts. We'll have The Witcher 3 and then, uh, like I said, the new Doom. Uh, reason why I use those two benchmarks, The Witcher 3 is hard on all of your computer's components. It, it will stress them all out. Now, Doom really is not a CPU-intensive game. Doom mostly relies on the GPU. So I figured let's try a GPU-bound game and see how it reacts. And as you can see from the numbers and the graphs, switching Doom from 1080 to 720 with the 2400 megahertz RAM nets you a 62% performance increase. Now going down to, with the 1600 megahertz memory, you only gain a 32% performance increase. Now this is a pretty big deal. We're talking about about half the performance gain by going ahead and adding a faster GPU in the system. Remember, the goal here is to emulate what a GTX 1070 or GTX 1080 in your system would perform like. And from what the data has shown, it seems that you need not only a decent CPU, your memory speed is even more important to hit really high frame rates because the system needs data as fast as humanly possible. Honestly, I really wish I had an X99 platform 
with quad channel memory, you know, at DDR4, 4,000 plus. You know, four sticks of eight gigs, DDR4, 4,000, just so I can see what the top of the line looks like. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Like you guys, I have to make do with what I have. So that's why I came up with this video. But if you're curious to test this out for yourself at home, run any of your games. Take any game that you normally run at 1080p or better, because the difference between 1440p and 1080p is about 44%. So you could even do the same thing at that resolution if you kind of wanted to see what the difference would be. This really only works if you have a GTX 970 or a GTX 980. You could probably use an R9 390 or an R9 390X and kind of extrapolate as they do perform pretty similar to the NVIDIA counterparts. However, being that they're different architectures, there might be some more variants in there, but it should still give you a rough idea. And what's kind of nice is it shows you exactly where your system will be bottlenecked if you do throw in a graphics card that's 57, which is virtually 60% more powerful into your computer without upgrading any of the rest of the system. Now, if you have a brand new top of the line system, you should be just fine. But this is for people that are running older Haswell, Ivy Bridge, or even Sandy Bridge CPUs, or people running uh, AMD CPUs still. And they just kind of want to know, is it even worth it? Personally, I would say run this test. If you're getting target frame rates that work for you in the games that you want them to, great. Then, you know, it should work for you. And then upgrading would be worth the money. Now, if you go ahead and you lower to 720p and you're seeing very little frame rate increase, that means there's something in your system seriously limiting whatever game it is that you're trying to play. And you really need to get that upgraded before it's even worth upgrading the new GPUs. Alrighty, guys, I hope this really helps you out. Uh, I found this kind of interesting going through. I was actually going to try and make a different video, but uh, using this information, this seems even more important. Because most people are running DDR3-1600, and that is going to seriously limit your performance, especially on extremely powerful GPUs when you're trying to hit 120, 144, 165, or even 200 frames per second. Uh, you need the absolute fastest memory on planet Earth if you really want to get up to those, especially the 200. You need the absolute fastest of everything. But for 144 hertz, you could probably make that work, but you're still going to need top tier stuff here, guys. If you guys have any questions, please leave comments below. Please like and subscribe if this video helped you out at all. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day and keep on fragging.